If you're the one at the office that's always on time at the meeting, shows up on the agenda, start to think like a toaster. If you walk around the office at the end of the day and tell everyone how many times they use the word gregarious, <laughs> starting to act like a toaster. If you tell the officer who gave you a speeding ticket that it took him 7 minutes and 55 seconds to write that up, <laughs> he should read it up. Started to act like a postman. And if you appeal that ticket and tell the judge that she would have a lot more authority if she had firmer gestures and, and maybe use that gavel <laughs> a little more strongly, that's a postmaster. And if you happen to ever get bit by a black widow spider while you're getting struck by lightning, being chased by a bear on the roof of the Sears Tower, and afterwards your only thought is, yeah, I got a story for my next speech. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Congratulations, you are now finally a de facto Toastmaster. Our next speaker tonight is someone that a lot of you know, some of you may not have seen or met him yet. His home club is Palatine Toastmasters up in Palatine, Illinois. And he is this year's reigning district governor. Dan, Obi, can we go to the next slide? Can we call up the nice Chicago Toastmasters welcome our district governor, advanced communicator, Srinivas Saini. Thank you, Patrick, for pronouncing my name right <laughs> and also giving my speech firmly. <laughs> wonderful job. Give, let's all give Patrick a wonderful speech. Okay. Now, some of you, some of you have heard my question, so if you've heard this question, don't answer it. What is the number one fear? in this world. is the fear of leaving your smartphone at home. <laughs> because you always have to worry about, you never know when you might need that phone, right? Somebody might need, have an emergency. Somebody might call you for a date. Right? Somebody might give you money. So a common misconception about Toastmasters is Toastmasters is only about getting rid of the fear of public speaking. No. Toastmasters is about making people who already communicate effectively communicate more effectively. Communicate better than they were taught they could communicate. Now, I always believe that Toastmasters is the only organization on this planet where the member is on the top. I always believe it. But somebody that I spent the last three days with made me realize that by his actions, that really member is at the top. If somebody can sit in my car and let me drive in my town in Chicago. If somebody can wait for me for 30 minutes, if he's the international president of those pastors, and still not say a single, not show a single sign of impatience, that person definitely is a servant leader. So I, I am very thankful for the gift of time that I got from our international president, Mr. Notaro. And I'm excited about the gift of time that you will get throughout this conference. So let's all give a big round of applause for Mr. Michael Nassar. I'm just going to give you a two-minute story of why I joined Toastmasters. And some of you have heard this. This was, this was seven years ago. 
I went home to India to visit my family. Uh, my dad uh, is the president of a uh, big university that, uh, that owns a lot of graduate colleges, schools, and undergrad colleges. So he takes me. He's excited about his son coming back to India. So he takes me to a freshman class of mechanical engineering in one of his engineering colleges. And he says, oh, this is my son. He's from the United States of America. He's going to say a few words. <laughs> <laughs> I lived with those kids. They were very young, better looking than me. <laughs> but I just froze. I could say a single word. Could say a single word. All the way in that 20 hour flight back home, I was thinking about how I let down my father. And then I saw a sign in AT&T where work that there was a Toastmasters. And it said public speaking, so I thought, let's go and go into this meeting and see what, what it's all about. They asked me to introduce myself. I started with like, I'm Srinivas. <laughs> And they still clap. <laughs> I was like, wow! Did, did, they, did they make the lottery or what? I joined. <laughs> and then my first icebreaker speech was 11 minutes, 49 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me tell you, uh, that was my communication journey. Let me tell you my leadership journey. Now, now that people, now that I'm talking and people are listening, now I want to be a leader, right? Just because people are giving me the gift of time and they are, they are a captive audience, they cannot run away and go to So now I feel that I could be a leader. So I wanted to be the vice president of education of our club. Now, ADP club had 50 members at the time and sometimes even for sergeant at time, I asked four people run in that club. That year, two people ran for vice president of education. One of them is sitting right here. So this person actually wrote a speech. She wasn't there. She had a dentist appointment or something like that. But she had campaign managers ready to pass out flyers. I, the wannabe leader, wrote the two-minute speech in my head and tried to give that speech. At the 30 second mark, I forgot my speech. <laughs> People still clap, but this time they had to vote. So out of the 45 votes that were polled that day, I got three votes. <laughs> One of them was myself. <laughs> One of them was uh, a friend that I go to lunch every day with. And the other person is in this room, I'm not going to name that person. <laughs> My opponent at that time is also in this room. She's a wonderful lady. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about her later. <laughs> but that taught me, that, that defeat taught me that just wanting to be a leader is not enough. Yep. You've got to be able to put in the time and effort and the commitment it takes to be a leader. I took that to heart, joined the nearest club possible, and again, one of my mentors helped me with this, and became a sergeant at arms. I love being a sergeant at arms because you don't have to think, you just carry yourself. Right? <laughs> that was the perfect place for me. Then I became the president of the club. Then I ran as division donor. This time I had a good speech. Good speech. Right, Lisa? And, and Lisa was the one that beat me 45 to 3. <laughs> At the VP level, I beat her. I got more votes than you, Lisa, that time. Did I? Three votes. Yes, she's counting. She's keeping count. And then I've never lost an election from that point. Not only, and the beauty of Toastmasters is you get to make your mistakes here and translate what you're learning to your real life. Because of this nomination process, because of, because of time and efforts you spend in becoming a leader and a communicator. It paid off for me. I got elected to different professional boards that helped me in my career. So that was my communication and leadership journey. 
hope some of you will take that to your mind. And I want to see every club officer position being a contested race in the district. Every club officer position. If you want to make club officer position the cool kids table, <laughs> who's with me? Yeah. Yeah. Now we're running short of time, but anytime I'm in front of in front of an audience, I want to make it. I have selfish reasons to be here. <laughs> the one reason I'm here on the stage today is to talk about the district governor marketing challenge. And there is one individual in this room, uh, Maria Mattarelli. She, she is a wonderful communicator. And then she, she, she's a president of Extreme Ghost Masters. Then she came to one of our project management institute meetings. She became a member there. And she works at Nokia Ghost Masters. Uh, no, Nokia. She works at Nokia. <laughs> and she's, she, she came up with this wonderful idea of, hey, why not start a club there? said, Maria, you want to start a club? Why don't you involve Extreme Ghostmasters to put that demo meeting, to put that sample meeting together? I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was spend 30 minutes with her on the phone, and the demo meeting was all set. She had wonderful marketing collateral. Uh, she had a board where uh, if you join the club, you write your name. And there are about 20 applications. And the district did not have to do anything. It was a club and club members taking Toastmasters to a corporation that did not have a club. So my challenge to you, all the clubs, is have at least one meeting at a local corporation, or a library, or a chamber of commerce, and a village. Come on. Church, if you're a part of an ethnic group, college, 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 all you have to do is send me an agenda. You have to have at least two prepared speeches in that meeting, two evaluations, and table topics. And you'll get a $25 gift certificate and a wonderful, wonderful picture of me that you can <laughs> cherish throughout your life. <laughs> So that, that was the selfish fish, but we are here today for the contest. We are here for the, today for the contest. And before I turn over the control of this area to Mr. Patrick Stevenson, we have a proclamation from Rose Point for Friday and Saturday. I want to read everything here, so please bear with me. This is a proclamation from the village of Rose Point. Whereas, Ghostmasters International was founded in 1924 and is dedicated to helping its 270,000 members throughout its worldwide network of 30,000 clubs in 116 nations become more competent and persuasive communicators and more confident leaders. Whereas, Ghostmasters local club, looks like there is a spelling mistake here too, Ghostmasters local district the Sikh 30 Toastmasters is holding the 2012 Spring Conference entitled Step Up to Leadership on Friday, April 20th through Saturday, April 21st at the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Conference Center in Rosemont, Illinois, where it will welcome approximately 600 members and visiting dignitaries from Illinois good neighbors to the north and east. Whereas the Sikh 30 Toastmasters is specially honored to welcome and host Toastmasters International President, Mr. Michael Nataro, member of Toastmasters for 20, it says 24 years, Michael, looks like they know more than me. I thought it was 27. He initially joined in order to learn how to write and deliver a speech successfully at his own graduation ceremony at the University of California, Berkeley. Whereas Mr. Notaro's history of service to those masses is natural, it is reflective of the organization's high ideals and standards. He generously shares all he has learned through those masters. As he voluntarily serves in the United States Coast Guard Reserve, Kibanis, Alameda Hope of America, 
and on the Board of Retirement American Bar Association. Let us the conference crown jewels between the International Speech Contest and the Gala Celebratory Dinner with Recognition Awards. Let us improving the ability of people to communicate as a noble and powerful mission, because good communication is a springboard for good relationships, which in turn promote peace and understanding, beginning right here at home and spreading throughout the world. Whereas we commend Toastmasters International and its 30 Toastmasters Club District for providing valuable educational and training programs to all its members, especially increasing the chances for personal and professional success among those with otherwise limited opportunities. Brad Stevens, Mayor of the Post. That's all for the I also have another proclamation from the City of Chicago. Today is Toastmasters Day in the City of Chicago. You and I are not going to read it, but today is Toastmasters Day in the City of Chicago. With that, I'm excited to bring up Mr. Patrick Stevens. As Srinivas indicated, we are trying to get us to the contest and we're running a little behind. So we're going to focus on the important announcements and skip some of the ones that you really don't need to worry about right now. So we don't need to, we don't need to cue the slides <clears throat> for the next few things. But if you are staying at the hotel and you haven't got one of these passes, make sure you get one from the VIP desk. They're being handed out, but they do have them at the VIP desk. Also, if Charles Brooks is in the house, or you know that he is, please help him to get down to the contest room here uh, as soon as you can. He's here. He is here. Okay. We make sure he's at the contest. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And as a reminder to the distinguished clubs, the photo sessions will be here after the contest tonight. And all the details on how to get lined up and for the photo are at the VIP desk right outside this room. So at this point, we'll take a short intermission, about five minutes, and we'll start the contest right after that. <laughs> <laughs>